Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the about politics, basically, in a general layman sense. You don't need to be a political scientist. Um, you basically just need to be a citizen of the world and open your eyes and your ears and listen and read and see what's happening um, in several countries to pretty much understand in a simple sense what humanly um, and psychologically at the scale of uh, society and sociology is happening to mankind, to humankind in the, in the area of politics. If we look at the political field, if we listen to everything that people are saying in different countries, you could summarize and generalize that it's, there seems to be two general atmospheres, two political families of thought, two general currents in politics. One is a right-winged, uh, capitalist, Tories, um, extreme, um, extreme right, you know, far right, as they say. And the other one is left, what is related, what is uh, associated to socialism and uh, labor parties, Christian Democrats. Um, and what you see is it seems that on the right, there's a lot of talk about the power of industry and finances and the authority of institution in, in, a, in a hard sense, in a mechanical sense, where in, on the left side or the Demo Christian Democrats, labor and socialist parties seem to always want to bring up the human factor, the inequality, uh, education, uh, the rights of workers, and you could therefore synthesize that there is in the world, the world over, because even China, which is on the other end, uh, one third of the world's population, uh, or one fifth or something, also did the same thing. They shifted from a left socialist, extreme communism, um, to uh, a sort of a capitalistic uh, socialism, sort of. I'm not sure actually if they, how much they retain of their, their, um, their, uh, you know, previous, com uh, you know, not very well studied in that, but basically we all know that they've become sort of a capitalistic power with a a, socialist, a, a single party socialist communist government. Um, and so you could synthesize that what you have seems to be a confrontation of the human mind that believes in the power of systems, of, um, the, of, of, of money's requirement to uh, further itself, to generate profit and become and generate power for people that handle money to bring power to financial institutions and therefore everything that generates money, uh, the military comp industrial complex, the, the world of international finances and so forth, versus uh, the political field that is talking about things that are uh, to do with uh, human uh, with uh, human issues of social equality of, of distribution and things that are about human nature so it's almost like you're we would be in actuality if we take it to this synthesis comparing um, you know olives to to oranges there are two different things and yet in the political argument, in the field of, of, of international of discussions, of political discussions, it's almost like uh, they're competing to see what system is better. But I would propose that it's not about a system that is better or, or one that fails, one that has success, one that is um, modern and progressive, the other one that is, that is classical or antiquated and all these ways of saying one believing one is better than the other are not actually the case. We're talking about two sides of the human mind 
um, that exists in the single human being, being ex having been divided into two political fields. So our nurturing of society and the classical um, uh, reason that governed uh, traditional political parties, which have to do with uh, society, the quality of the country, how people are living and how everything is getting distributed. And uh, on the other side, it seems that we have uh, grown the part that is um, acutely um, savvy in, 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 in working the levers and making the systems and numbers uh, crunch and generating power uh, in the institutions that generate more money so that more power can be had. Um, and then we talk, of course, about power in, on the right then, right? If we synthesize it this way, in this simple way, we could start maybe seeing things a little more clearly. And I forgot exactly the point I wanted to conclude with, so I'm going to pause. Okay, yeah. Um, two expressions that come from the, the same human being, basically. Not two uh, political philosophies that are rooted in different, in their own sources, but actually we are the ones that have created this split, is what I'm trying to say. And why we are the, the origin of the split itself is actually easy to understand if you think in evolutionary terms and uh, how to describe the psyche and how we how we evolved you know how our um, our emotions and our tendencies and our impulses have evolved because of uh, through uh, our uh, human existential condition um, basically the, the we have to understand the human condition on this earth, how our mind starts off basically uh, encountering its own species and therefore the first thing that we encounter is a state of stability of collective um, um, pro proliferation, not proliferation, but advancement, progress and stability and um, living, right? So in other words, our first state not one of conflict. We first start off, uh, you know, we were evolved to communicate and work socially, be able to function socially in stability, and that is what we gravitate, we would gravitate towards to, were it not that we run into all the problems of, of, of this biosphere, the conflict, the struggle, the suffering, the hardships uh, that we physically encounter, um, and the comp competition by other creatures and by eventually as we endow this uh, expectation of suspicion or this anticipation that, that suffering, difficulty or aggression will come from the outside, we start doing it to ourselves and we forget that really what we first always wanted was to be congenially stable as a species and we start assuming that somebody else wants to attack us and then we start always wanting to go back to that state of peace, which is the most natural state for the collective. Um, still, because we evolved a, a defensiveness towards uh, that was generated because of our existential condition of difficulty, toil, and suffering, um, we have a simultaneous so, sort of our, our state is one in which we anticipate that something will happen bad, <laughs> something, it will rain, it will be dangerous, uh, there will be a drought, uh, our food will, will exhaust, uh, some animal will <laughs> attack us, you know. And so we're uh, always anticipating that we have uh, what could happen that would uh, block our survival. Uh, because surviving is the first force, and surviving has to do with surviving that state of congenial collective stability. And so, so that the congenial collective stability can continue to move forward as for the species, uh, it is always engaging the world with this anticipation 
that something bad will happen. And therefore, the thing that is most attractive to us is that um, safety vest, or what do you call it, the, those rings that they throw from the ship when you fall overboard, the um, life vest, no, throw him a lifesaver. I forget what they're called, lifesavers, right? Um, so that uh, it, it, uh, when something that will save us from the suffering, from the toiling, from the fear, from the suspicion, from the doubt, appears before us, or we invent it, it becomes very attractive because it gives us power to overcome the struggle and the suffering. And so we want things that will help us get back faster to the state of collective stability and oneness. Um, and so that's why weapons and money uh, are so attractive because they generate power for that which never goes away, which is always that tendency to doubt, to to anticipate something will go wrong, right? We forget that if we let things be and we let go of the weapons and we let go of the money and we stop doubting and anticipating something bad is going to happen, we would naturally gravitate to oneness and to a st stable collectiveness. But um, because there's always that we evolve to uh, be prepared and to anticipate danger or threat, uh, there's that suspicion and that, that doubt that is always rearing its head continuously. It's never going to go away. It's always going to be part also of our existential... Uh, that's how we walk, basically. We, if we only had uh, knowing that we will be stable and collectively congenial and harmonious, we would get bored. We wouldn't try to overcome anything or invent something to grab that life best, to have more power. So power is very... Power in itself is not something you can grab. Power is generated. People talk about having power. Well, power is created. You want, you don't want to lose it. Is what happens. People don't want to lose money. They don't want to lose their guns. They don't want to uh, because they want to maintain that feeling of power. And power in itself is intangible. We generate the what the, the instruments that um, that maintain that power to overcome the difficulty, the toil, the suffering, the threat, the fear of of existence. Um, and so what we have in the synthesis that I explained before is uh, one general half or atmosphere of, of, of this uh, political family, uh, I mean this family of political philosophies that have to do with extreme right, the far right, Tories, capitalism, da da da, are very um, almost addicted, you could say, to they found ways of generating a lot of power through the power of money, the power of institution, corporation. Um, you know, all you have to do is look at Trump and see how he acts. And he's, he doesn't care that he's, he's incentivated, incentivating uh, Netanyahu and, and Modi in India and, and having uh, the Bolivians go backwards. And, and uh, because they're, he's so afraid of socialism, the, the right is afraid uh, of socialism because it is power that's afraid of uh, power being subtracted from, from them. And why that threat is felt is because the other side, the, the more human, our values and distributions, socialism and what's happened, why, why is there so much violence and inequality, you know, everything, they can't really... They're a little confused because the ones that are more concentrated on where they want to plow forward are the ones on the right. The ones on the left don't realize what their virtue is. They kind of know that there are things wrong with society and they're fighting for those in isolated ways, in detached ways, but they don't understand that they're part of the human mind that is wanting to stop um, sort of the messenger uh, the harbinger of, of, of destruction, which is like the right. Uh, because what happens is that if the, the starting point or the general base is that of stability, we would not have a threat. The, the world is full of threats, but we um, 
do not want to live in threat. So our starting point, and more so when we realize how intelligent human beings are compared to all animals, right? So it's not hard to not lose sight of the, the prime state of stability and congeniality and collective uh, prolif for, uh, advancement or proliferation, what is thriving, thriving of, of the collective. Uh, and it, it, is a, what is mo it is what is most natural. So when somebody says, but I'm going to pick up a gun, I'm going to have power in my hands, uh, granted, capitalism believes that it's it's the system that generates and that makes it humanity advance, and they have they understand it differently. They think that it's it's how uh, humanity brings forth progress in a dynamic and energetic way. But in reality, what happens is that they're picking up arms unnecessarily. They're they're grabbing up money and power and and weaponry unnecessarily. It's not really what we want. We want to live in stability and trust of each other. And so when one half says, uh, but we're going to be strong and we're going to plow forward with the power of finances and, and weaponry and we're going to believe in systems. The ones, the rest of humanity goes, why? What's wrong? You know, we start looking around like, what are you defending against? There's, there's no other species on this planet that would attack us. We're here alone. What are you defending yourself against? Um, but, you know, that comprehension, that perspective is not really understood by the, the, these two sides that are happening uh, and have happened, maybe perhaps in some way this has been happening since the beginning of, of complex uh, political governance uh, that we have split into in these two areas. Uh, but, you know, in reality, what would be wiser is for us, for government to realize that what it wants to do is distribute to everybody the intel the fruits of our intelligence and so that means all the benefits all the all the things that make us be able to live comfortably and easily and cure diseases and and not suffer all the things that we would suffer in this earthly existence be distributed to everybody because as a species we would care that nobody's left out so this is the irony that uh, the right seems to be more uh, sharper and, and wittier and stronger and, uh, <laughs> you know, they look the part, they dress better. Um, and, but the ones that really have the right idea are on the left. They're the people who say, wait a second, we don't want to accept that there's a mass of poor people. Um, but we don't see that they're right because we are convinced that it's simply two different political ideologies that one has some good points and the other one has other good points and and, and those always fail and these just find difficulty and, and you know and, and they both believe that if the whole world was like what they believe it would work out but they have to put up with the uh, the uh, you know like it's a a, a, a a sports match or something uh, in reality, no, we're talking about uh, two expressions of thought that come forth from the human condition, from uh, the, our human existential condition. And in that, uh, we would have to realize that what needs to be done is that these two halves need to merge into one. And when you merge those two into one, you will have one that has, um, a, a, you know, the right, and it would be the left. The left is the one that is thinking about human beings and our, the quality of our living. How to achieve the quality of our living to be distributed equally among all people could employ instruments that, um, that come from, uh, that have always been used by the right except that we can't have money and system be uh, a, a, a living will that, that directs political decisions and people. We can't have so that there is profit and growth, we need to do this to people. No, it's the other way around. Uh, maybe profit and growth will come, but what we first need is for people to have these things. So, in other words, the mistake that the, the right is making is that it's letting people be driven 
by a mindless appetite of, of finances and, and, and money wants to generate more of itself, it's, it's being driven by power, in other words. The, the, the lust or the sort of the addiction of, of humanity, of, of, of uh, politicians to maintain power is endowing finances and, and, and systems with, um, with a sort of artificial will. You know, and it's endowing it with the the authority to create decisions, but it's just a coin. It's a piece of metal. It's a piece of pa paper. It's not. It's not people. Uh, and so the the left is correct in that politics needs to be about values, about principles for the well-being of living human beings. <laughs> um, I know it seems silly and somebody's going to say, well, of course we do that too. And, you know, somebody on the right, some Tory is going to say, of course we care about people. But it's because the world hasn't really identified that these two general areas can be personified through a description, um, a finite, final description that, that understands what part of the human psyche they're both manifesting. And in doing that, we will see that the, the, the side of the right, of the Republicans, of the Tories, of the ones that are all about corporations and stuff, are actually, um, you know, they're needing, <laughs> they're needing a lot of slaves, a lot of masses, a lot of production to maintain. It's, if you look at it as a, like a 3D model, it's like this little creature with a little head in the front. That, so that it can continue ha having a lot of power, it needs everybody to be to serve it. And the other side is saying, no, all those people that are serving you are the ones that need to be served by the fruits of human intelligence and human invention. They're not supposed to be serving the production of invention. Inventions and the fruits of our intelligence need to serve the people. <laughs> Um, so it, it can be summarized, it can be generalized, and if you start uh, into two general areas of, of two spirits, two general political spirits uh, confronting each other and not understanding what they each actually represent, and if you look at it this way, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier to understand what is happening to us, what's happening in the world, what's happening, what countries are doing, how blind they are, and what how they misassume why other politicians or other countries do what they do or say what they say, everything starts, uh, a different light starts getting shed on, on, on the whole situation. Okay, hope this was somewhat understandable uh, for uh, layman's terms <laughs> that they are.